How's it going everybody? I hope you're doing all right. Welcome back to another video with me, Adam, AKA The Real Simzo. Typically I've been doing a lot of Digimon VPET stuff and I will continue to do some Digimon VPET stuff, but I've got something a little extra special for you today. If you're anything like me and you're a nineties kid, which I know my audience is predominantly around my age. So most of you likely are nineties kids. Then you grew up with Power Rangers. Go, go, and I gotta admit, it's been one of my favorite franchises since I can remember. I've got a lot of uh, really cool Power Ranger like figurines and toys, and it's something I really obsessed with as a kid. Honestly, it might have been like one of my first things I ever really, really got into. And I remember as a kid, I had these like virtual pet Power Ranger things, and I've been kind of trying to track them down, but with absolutely no luck. And a couple days ago, it finally dawned on me, like I should ask ChatGPT what these things were. It does a really good job of actually figuring out like, oh, Old toys or TV shows or movies or music or what have you, as long as you can describe it well enough. And it pulled through. So I was able to find exactly what I was looking for. Check these things out. They're like these uh, Power Ranger V-Pet things. So the idea is that I don't think you raise the Megazords, but you're at least able to like tune them up and you can fight them. And I, I had both of these models. So I, I was stoked. I couldn't believe I found them so quickly. I went immediately online after it kind of keyed me off to what these things were called, which are the Galaxy Digi Zords. Uh, so they're like these interactive battling games. And both of these were actually listed as like Power Rangers interactive battle games, not Digi Zords. So I'm not surprised that Googling V pets or Power Ranger V pets and stuff like that never really popped anything up. But I got two of them so we can play with some. Let's go ahead and head into the heads down overview so that way we can pop these things open and start playing along. All right, we're back. So let's go ahead and open up some of these boxes. If I remember correctly, I think this one's called the Toro's Ward. This was like in every Power Ranger season, there was always like another Ranger that showed up midway through the season. And this is one of those Power Rangers Zords, basically. So it was kind of like this bull like creature. Toro's Ward, charge! <laughs> Um, I remember it being really, really dope. Uh, let's go ahead and just dig into it. Oh, uh, good old crinkles of that old plastic. <laughs> so it comes with this little like bird gun like thing. And then we've got the devices themselves. Somewhat poseable looks like. Head turns, arm turns. It's pretty cool. Looks like you've got a couple of buttons here. Um, so it looks like maybe a maintenance mode and then it looks like, wait, hold on, let me get this up into the, the camera here. So it looks like maybe there's some sort of a maintenance mode here and then like a battle mode. Uh, I don't know, maybe a menu or something. Uh, let's see if we got some instructions anywhere. Cool. Oh, gameplay, cool, here we go. This is what I really was hoping to be able to see. So it looks like we've got a missile launching game bomb evading game and then there's like a battle connect mode cool and i noticed uh check this out it uses like the same two prongs kind of like digimon do so i doubt that we would be able to like do battle you know they don't even line up <laughs> but that would have been kind of neat would have been kind of neat so this does have lr44 batteries in it and um i knowing this is from the 90s i should probably check and make sure those things aren't leaking i, I know that's a thing with digimon um might be a thing with these too Let's go ahead and open up the other one. I think this one's called like the uh, Galaxy Digizord, maybe? Galaxy Digizord, yeah, right there. Looks like that's what that one's called. I don't see, I don't see anywhere where it says Toro Zord, but I swear that's what it was called. Check out that green one, that's cool. I don't remember that one at all. All right, let's get these out of the way. Very similar to the Toro Zord over here. Looks like we've got, you've got like the Yellow Ranger, the Pink Ranger, the Red Ranger. Um, you know, and I feel like there was like an individual kind of like golem like creature that was the blue one at the bottom. I don't know. I'll put up some videos around these. <laughs> Zord, transform now! Galaxy Megazord, transform! Gosh, these are so cool. I remember loving these as a kid. They were just so much fun. And basically in order to battle them, you just stack them against each other kind of like this, just like sort of like Digimon. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart and just make sure that nothing is leaking. 
So if you are a Power Rangers fan, or if you were a Power Rangers fan, and you have not been reading the comic book series, you really should check it out. It's been produced by Boom Comics, and it is an absolute blast. I'm having a lot of fun with it. They just wrapped it up, actually. I think there's like 110 issues, maybe. Um, they've introduced some really fun characters. It's been a really, really cool series. It's actually been one of probably one of my more favorite comics in the last handful of years, too. It's, it's been really good really well written and it's led into a lot of fun spin-off series that I've really been digging so pry that open there good thing I checked nasty okay so my understanding is is if you run across this you got to get some uh, cotton balls or something like that and basically alcohol and just wipe those terminals down so that's what I'm gonna go do I'm gonna go clean these guys up and uh, we'll come back all right well we got this one back together Somehow in all of the shuffling, I lost the pull tab for this one. No idea where. So I will pull tab this guy, and then we'll do this one. I was really bummed. I was wanting to pull them back to back, but I've been searching for like 25 minutes now, so I'm I'm done looking. But here we go. Here we go. So, oh, hold on. Uh, I got him on. Tired. Time for bed. So I can't imagine there are too many people out there that are running these guys. Uh, on the regular or anything and I can't imagine the last time someone pulled this tab on one of these so here we go I'm stoked I hope you are too oh come on don't fail me now camera what does it say well it's kind of hard to see there but I will look through the camera check that out Looks like we got a little Power Ranger. Here we go. Let's do another one. Power Rangers. Oh, that's a cool animation. I don't think we caught it on the other one. How neat. This is just jumping around. That's cool. All right, we're back and I got a little bit better of a camera angle, but something I noticed whenever I switched over to this camera, look at this. That screen is blank. Now, it's still making noise, so it's definitely working, but it's like the screen itself is, I mean, you can kind of barely make it out, right? So I'm guessing that something in here is, is not quite working, but it's totally okay because as far as I can tell, these both do exactly the same thing. So effectively, there's going to be like a menu option over here where you can go through and you can see power, speed, skill. You got your victories there, your percentage of your win rate, basically. You can turn the sound on and off, and then you've got this power, um, same thing ever all over again, right? From there, you basically have like a couple of mini games. So there's game one, game two, and then I think you can unlock more based off of what I can tell. But I think it might be locked behind like win ratios or something like that. There is no tournament mode though. So the only way to really play with these is if you had two of them or if you had a friend with one. So kind of interesting. And as far as I can tell, there's not really like a life cycle. Like these things don't really die. There's no real raising mechanic. You're not really feeding them or anything like that. I mean, from what I can tell, all you're gonna be doing here really is just playing these mini games. And then depending on what game you play, it's going to basically change your statistics over here for power and speed and skill and such. And then based off of that, you're either gonna do better or worse in battles against the other Digizords basically. It's pretty neat. Um, there's no tournament mode or anything like that. I do think that Digimon could take something from this, though. I mean, in the Digimon world, you know, something like this, you've got care mistakes and you've got feed times and training. And then you also have like basically how many individual battles that you're doing. Right. So depending on how many battles you're fighting, you're going to potentially evolve or at least you have to get the 15 win rate. Right. And then something like this, or even the other one I just showed, you're gonna have different care mistakes that cause different evolution lines and such. There's not really a concept like that with this. As far as I can tell, these things don't die. Um, so that's kind of interesting. You don't have different rangers. In fact, I'm not even sure which ranger that necessarily is. So it's just whichever one you want, I guess. It's uh, definitely not the special ranger that's tied to the Torozord because he has like a cape and some other things there but I don't think you can change out the Ranger as far as I can tell. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive in and play some mini games here. Uh, so game one, let's get into it. 
Start. And it's basically just like a shoot 'em game. Kind of hard to see there. You have a lifespan. You can move your character up, down. You shoot at these guys. It's almost kind of like Galaga, or uh, yeah, I think it's Galaga. So I got zero on that. Let's try this again. There we go. Hopefully you all can see. It's kind of hard for me to see and have the camera on at the same time. It doesn't look like letting these little guys get by really does anything. But as I was saying earlier, how cool would it be if instead of like on the Digimon, you have basically one type of training, right? And then depending on how well you do, it either is a success or it's a failure. And it ultimately counts towards your overall effort. But I think it would be really cool if in the future iterations of Digimon Virtual Pets, they had some sort of a mechanic where maybe you have like a strength meter and a speed meter and a health meter or something like that. Oh, cool, I got an 80. Uh, but basically the idea of like different stats on your Digimon, kind of like in Digimon World, right? And then depending on how you train them, they would evolve into something else potentially. I, I kind of think Digimon could take from this. I mean, that would be such a cool way to do it where basically, you know, you have some kind of different training mechanisms and then they would train different stats and based off those stats, you're gonna evolve into different Digimon. I think that would be really cool. If anything, it would just be really nice to have more than one training type. Uh, like just having two games on this is pretty cool. So this is like a jumping game, I think. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you press this button and then you jump. So you press A to jump over the rocks, or you can press B basically to like duck. So let's see how far we can get. Yeah, not very far. <laughs> slide, nice, slide again. Slide. How cool. Yeah, this is totally something I want to see Digimon adapt. I want different training modes. I want more mini games. Oh, I didn't quite jump far enough. I wonder if I have to hold it down. Or if it's a timing thing. Oh, look, got it, nice. Nice. Oh, not quite far enough. Dang, that snuck up on me. Oh. And this just seems to repeat over and over and over. I don't know that there's like an end scene or if it ever just kicks you out. Oh, maybe I completed it? Cool. Nice. 210, very cool. Game two. Let's try and see if we can get further in game one. Oh. This is kind of hard. Dang. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to be able to beat game one. <laughs> we'll give it another shot here. And it doesn't seem like it matters if you just let them go. So maybe I just need to dodge out of the way. Just get the ones I can. Get out of the way of that one. He's moving too fast. Oh, darn. Oh, man, I definitely thought I got that one. See, how easy would it be for them to add something kind of like this into a, a virtual pet? I think this would be a lot of fun. Now, the other thing that I was reading too, because I went and read through the manual. Oh, nice, score 110. All right, so let's exit out of here. Power, speed, skill, it's all the same. Which is interesting because I definitely, I read through the booklet like I was about to say, and it seems like playing these little mini games is basically what 
trains your character. So maybe you just have to train them for a really long time or, or play this a whole bunch. I was kind of hoping we would see at least one of these metrics bump up a little bit, but that's okay. The other thing I was reading is whenever you go to do your battle, there are basically four different Zords that you can choose from. So these are the different ones you choose, and then I think depending on which one you choose, the animation is slightly different. Is it? Yeah, actually it is. That does. That looks slightly different than it did previously. So then you can exit out here. Let's choose this one and see. Nice, that's cool. That's really cool that it actually has all the different Zord formations for each one. And then it shows you the power of that Zord. That's really cool. How neat. Let's check out the Toro Zord. And then it's just him, yeah, because he's just an individual Zord. He doesn't combine or anything like that. Man, Power Rangers Galaxy was such a fun series. I really like this series. Now, the other thing I was reading, and I think this is really, really cool, is whenever you do the fights between the two different Digizords, you can actually interact in the fights. So basically you can charge up your blast by pressing this button, and then I think it was this button, the D button ultimately, that allows you to basically like dodge or like deflect a, a, a blast back. It looked really cool. I don't know how easily I'm gonna be able to do any fights just because this guy's not doing great. Um, let me go tinker a little bit and see if maybe I can get this screen fixed and then we'll do a fight. Even if even if I can't get the screen fixed, uh, we'll attempt a fight and see what we can, you know, at least see on, on this guy over here. All right, let's try. I'm adjusting the modulator to read an alternative signal. Just need a few more minutes. I was able to get it fixed. Actually, this thing was pretty easy to take apart and then all I had to do was just bend those terminals back in place and it looks like it worked for us. So why don't we go ahead and see if the games on this one are the same. I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, they are. Yep, yep, same here. And then, yep, just another running game. Nice, okay. No more games. I know there's more games than, than two, but uh, I say we go ahead and do a battle. Let's go ahead and try to battle these two. Okay, nothing needs to be repaired. And then I'll choose the Toro Zord here. Nice little animation. Oh, cool, because they formed on this one. It had slightly different animations. That's pretty neat. And fight. Okay, so we're going to try and get these two connected. Okay. I'm going to focus on the Toro Zord over here. Let's see. No, it doesn't look like either of them really dodged. Maybe it's these. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's these. It's these controllers. Okay, so here we go. Can we get it to dodge? Oh, I think he dodged. Cool. Look at that. They're like meeting in the middle. Oh, wow. And they just went past each other. Nice. That's so cool. So we got a win over here, very neat. Let's see, if we battle again. Now you'll see, Toro Zord's not available over here because he's been damaged, so we would have to repair him, basically. So if we go repair, we can choose the Toro Zord. We'll give him a repair real quick. Okay, do we need to repair anything over here? Nope. No repair. You can see the little Power Ranger shaking his head. Like, nah, bro, we good. We won that one. Let's try this one. And the Digizords are forming. How cool. Fight. Alright, let's try it. I wonder if who initiates matters on these like it does on the... Digimon Virtual Pets. Oh, see, that's not... That would be really nice if these things locked just a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Okay. Sweet.
Okay, I, I saw the dodge animation or the kickback animation, but... Oh, cool. Looks like we got some kind of a power-up move, maybe. Oh, nice. Toro's Word went through. Can we dodge it? Nope. Nice. That time uh, the other guy won. I don't know what that Zord's name is, but... Sweet. I feel like we got to do at least one battle with every Zord. Let's go with this guy. And we'll choose Toro's Word over here since our other one's damaged. And you can kind of like skip these. Yeah, there we go. Get them connected. Very cool. Let's see, can we dodge? Nope, not in time. Let's see if we can power these up. How neat. I, I don't think I'm getting the dodge mechanics down quite right, uh, but I know that they exist. And honestly, that seems to be like really all there is to it. Um, I think it'd be really cool if I could unlock some of the additional games, like these little mini games over here. Um, but I don't know what all goes into that. So yeah, we just got game one, game two. Let me check the instructions real quick and see if there's an easy way or if it says how to unlock games three and four. And if we can, we'll do that and we'll show those off. The only other thing really to show off though that I think is kind of neat, it comes with these little like, you know, bird critters that I know are part of the Zords and they just fit into the hand like that so that I think the super moves in this TV show for the Zords, one of them was at least shooting something like a cannon or something like that out of the bird. But they also kind of surface, but they also kind of serve another purpose here where they actually protect like the little connectors. So you can put it over the connectors on the back and I'm sure in the show, the bird probably sat on the back as well. But I think that's kind of a cool little touch. I think that's neat. And it looks like I was actually wrong. There's just two, two different games. There's the missile launching game and the bomb evading game. I never would have guessed that those were bombs, but okay, cool. And then past that, you just have the battle connect mode and you can see there's like this attack mode, protect mode, you press A or B while the bomb is coming at you from your opponent to protect yourself and affect the outcome of the battle. Another thing in my opinion that Digimon could learn from. How cool would it be if these were a little bit more interactive? I mean, yeah, you do ultimately have, like depending on what device you're looking for, this guy you just attack. It's a, it's the old school version, it's color, but it's just the old school battle versions. Over here, you know, there's a shaking mechanic with the pendulum, so you have to shake it a certain amount of times and then you get like a super move. And that's kind of the gist of it. With the X devices, you have a little slider that slides back and forth. And those are cool. But what if there was a, the ability like this to where like you could potentially dodge or charge up each attack or something like that? I think that would be really dope. I would love to see Bandai incorporate more things into the virtual pets because we know they're capable of more. It's just a matter of kind of thinking a little outside the box and what all you could add in. Honestly, these are, these are really cool. I'm pretty stoked that I was able to get my hands on some. Uh, 12 year old me would be freaking out right now that I'm still playing with something like this. I think it would be fun to maybe just keep these on the side, play a little bit more and see if I can get like power, speed, skill or any of that stuff to actually change a little bit. Uh, oh, did I get maybe a little bit more on that one? Skill, it's kind of like a small uptick. Cool, that's neat. Um, but other than what I've shown you here, as far as I can tell, there's really not much else to these guys. It'd be really cool if there was a new model for these. I know there's a lot of new Power Ranger stuff that they're working on. How cool would it be if like there was a newer version of these where you could basically like raise a Power Ranger? Like you could choose which color you wanted, kind of like a different egg on a Digimon. And then from there you could potentially like train it up and maybe get like a Battleizer.
because I know that's one of the big boosts in the Power Ranger world is getting this thing that like enhances your Power Ranger armor. And then even if you were to go through and have like a tournament mode or something where you're just fighting all of the different monsters from whatever season they chose to base these off of, I think that would be really cool. And then you could even introduce like that sixth Power Ranger like I was talking about earlier, like the white Power Ranger or the green Power Ranger, or, you know, I think in the more recent series, it was like, uh, I mean, the mixture of colors, but it was almost like a godlike Power Ranger. It was really crazy. Um, I think this would be a blast. I think it could be really fun to introduce something back into the Power Ranger world like this. I know it wouldn't be for everybody though. Super niche audience, but it would be pretty neat. Like you could do a lot more with these, especially now that there's a little bit more precedence for virtual pets out there, if that makes sense. Like they've iterated on the Digimon enough. It would be cool to see a resurgence of something like this. I would play it. I would hope that other people would too. It, you can definitely do more with these. But anyways, thanks for watching along and enjoying a bit of nostalgia with these guys. I had a blast playing around with them. I don't think there's a whole lot more I'll be able to do with them, but really cool shelf pieces and a really cool little thing to add to the collection and a huge blast of nostalgia. I was super, super excited to have finally found these. So I hope you enjoyed playing with some old toys from the past for me. Maybe this uh, hit a nostalgia chord for you as well. But anyways, catch me again in a couple weeks for probably something more Digimon related. And from me and these Digizords, have a good one, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.